Hi again folks, in this video, the players send a message to Granado and Adams. Let's get to work to do more. Let's take a look at this article, coming up. All right guys, I thought this was uh, another good read. And I'll tell you what folks, I'm just loving this team more and more as the season approaches next season. I just can't wait to get going. All right, so look, we got uh, five clips, and one of them is just a header, so there's only four read clips, and it uh, shouldn't be too long. So let's get right into this. All right, here we go. Sabres players message to Don Granado. Let's get to work to build more. And we will go right into this. Here we go. As Granado and general manager Kevin Adams discussed the season that ended, they took pride in the steps their organization took. They know there is still a ton of work to do before Buffalo is a Stanley Cup contender. But they'll look back at the 2021-22 as the season that built a foundation for winning. I really feel that if you can create an environment where people can come in every day and be authentic and just be themselves, you're putting them in a position to thrive, Adams said. What I feel really good about this locker room is that's the way it is now. The players have made it clear they love what's going on in Buffalo. Adam's job is to add players and make sure the organization gets better. It starts with the NHL draft. The Sabres are expected to have three picks in the first round, including two in the top 16. That will change if Vegas wins one of the two lotteries and moves up 10 spots from its 16th position but it has just a 0.5% chance of winning the first lottery and will have very similar odds for the second. So that's, uh, yeah, the draft lottery. I tell you guys, I'm, that's all I could think about. I'm doing a video on it soon too, so we're gonna talk about this. Yeah, so that's, um, he talks about later on here though, what he, about the drafts, the potential of trading and so let's, let's just keep going here, here we go. So, assuming the Sabres have three picks in the top 32, will Adams use them or flip one for a player who's NHL ready? If you're putting me on the spot, I would expect that we would make our three picks, the GM said. When we talk about long-term sustainable success, you need talent. You need talent that can come up from Rochester and you don't have to rush them. You can let them grow and develop and then when they're ready, boom. They're here and they're ready to be impactful. A lot of that is how you draft and the assets that you have. That was part of our plan was to accumulate assets. So we, could, we would expect that we would use them appropriately. But you've got to be open. You've got to be in the conversations and you have to be ready for any type of thing in the right, if the right opportunity presents itself. The Sabres could use the picks because the pipeline may get thinner. Adams said defenseman Ryan Johnson, a first round selection from 2019, is expected to return to the University of Minnesota for a senior season. Though the Sabres could sign him next spring, Johnson could also wait until August 2023 and become an unrestricted free agent. And you know what, if that happens, I don't think we have to worry, really. So it, I, I think we'll get wind of that and we'll move them. Uh, wherever, you know, they probably would talk to him and say, listen, what, where do you want to go? We'll, we we want to get something back. We don't want to just, you know, I don't like these, uh, these rules that these players can go UFA. I don't like it at all. Really? You gotta, you gotta kill yourself in the NHL to go UFA, but these guys from college, they can, they have these rights. It just drives me nuts. Really? But it doesn't mean that's what's happening. I just don't like it. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. Regardless, Adams will look to improve the blue line this summer. There's a solid core of Dalin, Power, Samuelson, Yokiharu, but there's room to add. Ideally, the Sabres will add a right-handed defenseman to a lefty, a left-heavy unit, but Adams said the only right he has in his mind is the right fit. I don't know how close you guys watch a pair like Dalin and Samuelson, he said of the two lefties who finished the year together. It's hard to figure out who's playing which side, just by the way they're moving around. Part of, that, part of that's by design from the way Donnie and the coaches put the system in. 
And part of that chemistry is just them doing their thing. So let's focus on, we have to get a right shot defenseman to play with Owen Power or Erasmus Dahlin. More about, is there the right person that fits what we're doing here? That without a doubt, it, for me, what he said right there, okay, we, uh, uh, let's focus on the right shot defenseman. This thing about, I don't know where this came from. This, this all of a sudden we have to have, it's this emergency to get a right sided defenseman. I, you know what, I'm going to do a video, guys, and I'll tell you what, the ones that say, oh, you have to, are going to feel pretty little <laughs> when I show them some of the guys in the NHL that you don't know that are lefties playing on the right side that are awesome players. I might make that video because people are under the illusion that, oh, my God, we got to get a right shot defenseman when, yeah, okay, it's part of it, but what he says there is right. You know, it's it's... We got to make sure it's the guys. Are they right? Are they the right people that we're bringing in? Forget the guys. Forget the positions. We had this talk years ago about that with with centermen. Then we got Eichel, and we thought everything was fixed, and things got worse than ever. No, you want to bring in character guys before you want to worry about the exact positioning. Look what we did with Tage. We turned him into a number one center overnight. We got a smart coaching staff here, guys. They know what they're doing. Okay. Final clip, here we go. The Sabres' most pressing need is goaltender. Craig Anderson, 40, will take a month or two to decide if he wants to retire. The only netminder under team control is UPL, who has played 13 NHL games. Prospects Devin Levi and Eric Pertillo are staying in college for their junior seasons. I'm really excited about the internal answers I feel we have here within our organization for down the road, Adam said. We'll look at different options, but what we won't do is something to box ourselves out or that maybe we would be uncomfortable with down the road. It's possible the Sabres could sign a second-tier free agent to a one-year deal, like they did with Anderson. Options include Braden Holpe, Casey DeSmith, Martin Jones. Or Buffalo could trade for a goalie with one year left on his contract, which would provide a bridge to Lukanen, Levi, or Portillo. Options include Semyon Varlamov, Antti Ranta, Cam Talbot, and Jonathan Quick. Whichever goalie they choose, he will join a team with a good base of forwards and defenders. Yeah, so I think that should be our focus, and I agree with that, guys. That's what, uh, when I read that part, when he said less focus on the, the right side of thing and more focus on the right person, that to me just clicked right away. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to look at. We have to bring in the right people into this organization. We can't mess around and start going for the high ticket guys because, oh, he's a right shot defenseman and they're hard to find. And okay, so what? So put a lefty there. These are professionals. These aren't children. <laughs> you know, this isn't a peewee team. You don't got to worry, you know. Like I said, I, I think down the line I'm going to make a video on some of the guys that many fans don't even realize play the right side and they're left-handed defensemen. So, I, you know, what, why, why do we have to be special and different? <laughs> you know, we don't have to be. But goaltender, of course, for me, is priority. If we can get a right uh, shot defenseman, oh, by all means, good, you know, if we can. If we can't, okay, then what can we get is the question, right? I, I don't really think it's that important like that. It, like goaltender is. We need to get a goalie, guys. We need to get a goalie. We're, you know, we're in a situation now where I'm a little nervous now about our goaltending issue. You know, it would have been nice if uh, Levi would have signed and maybe uh, went into um, the Amherst for next year, but... Uh, it is what it is right now. We're going to have to try and land somebody. I think Holtby's probably the most obvious, really. I, I know there's some good names there, but I like, you know, Holtby, you know, he's a big goalie. He's got a Stanley Cup ring. He's not going to cost much. So I don't want somebody that's going to cost a ton and we take, you know, and it's a big high risk. Now, unless it's a guy like Fleury, which is a pretty, I'd say a pretty sure thing for a year or two that he could work out. Because he's a team guy, he would, 
he would be like our Alex Tuck in goaltending. You know what I mean? He would just come into that locker room and and I'm sure he would fit in perfectly with the Sabres team. So that's, that's a thought in itself too. But we're going to be looking at like six, seven million for, for, you know, I'm guessing it's going to be about seven million a year. And that's a little high risk. We can afford it for a few years though. We can. So we'll have to see. We're gonna have to see, but I, I guarantee goaltending should be and will be on top of their list. They're gonna. I think that's what gonna. They're gonna look for a goalie, a defenseman, and a character forward. I'm sure they're gonna look for those three pieces this offseason. So that's where this guy stands. Anyway, guys. All right, that's it. That's it. <laughs> all right, that's it with this one. I got more coming your way. I'll see you in those.